r slash r's credit, people that work on movie sets. What are the most entitled actors you have ever met? My mum's friend did security for concerts. She always told us about how nice the bands were but Adele was a nightmare, her fans started to line up before her concert outside of the stadium and Adele refused to do sound check because she didn't want anyone to hear her for free and you couldn't look at her when she spoke to you. ACDC was the nicest band she encountered and the Foo Fighters. Bam Marjorie used to frequent a mall where I was managing a store. He was always cool and never seemed pretentious. One afternoon he came in with some friends, and they were all obviously either high, drunk, or both. They were in my store, making a scene, being obnoxious, and started throwing around merchandise. Before I could say anything to them, Bam turned around and yelled for them to stop acting like effing children and to put everything back where they got it. Like good little peons, they did what they were told. He just looked at me and with a long, and tired, look on his face told me he was sorry about them. So, yeah, Bam seems to be a good guy. Bruce Villanch demanded I serve him his skittles while in my underwear. I was young and wanted to get into the industry so I, regretfully, did it. Not that it's any surprise to anyone, but Michael Cera is a huge effing a hole. I watched so many young musicians come up to him during the Sex Bob Bomb tour come up to him to talk about music or gush about how he inspired them, only for him to either brush them off completely, ask them why they're talking to him, or just have security come take them away. Total D. Many years ago I worked at Oab in Philly. We had a reservation for Don King one night but he and his large party didn't show. So about 15 minutes past close he calls and says he is running late but will be there in a few minutes. Owner asks essential staff to stay and about an hour later King and his party arrive. His party eats and drinks until after midnight but when presented with the check King says one of his companions was unhappy with the food. The waiter offers to take it off the bill, King makes snarky remark like, of course you will. He ends up leaving no tip on a nearly $2,000 bill while making staff work an extra three hours. My sister is a writer and has met and worked with lots of people in Hollywood. I asked her who the nicest celebrity she ever met was and she said without hesitation, Luke Berry. My friend has worked on Dr. Phil for years. He has a no eye contact rule and is apparently one of the nastiest, most self-absorbed people in the industry. Faye Dunaway, Faye Dunaway. And I cannot stress this enough. Faye Dunaway. I've had dealings with her personally and can vouch for her entitledness, and nastiness, but my friend who works on movie sets has horror stories. Extremely demanding, and also picky. She brings her scales with her everywhere and will make anyone catering weigh it up in front of her. She has a no eye contact rule, which must never be disobeyed, and she also yells and screams when things do not go her way. I have a friend who works on a lot of movies so she has worked with a ton of people. From what I remember, here are her thoughts on different people. Jake Gyllenhaal's method acting style and requirements are annoying and strict, so he can often be rude and hard to work with. Lawrence Fishburne initially comes off as a D and absolutely hates when you call him Larry, but he can swiftly turn that around and be a great guy and your best friend. Keanu Reeves is everything amazing you'd expect him to be, but because he is so personable he doesn't have too many intimate one-on-ones with people. Emma Watson is a bit self-involved. Matt Damon is super cool, funny, and intelligent. James McAvoy is stellar to work with apparently, she also has a huge crush on him. M. Night Shyamalan is apparently an amazing father and one of the best bosses to work for. I've heard several stories about the work he puts into being a great family man. 50 Cent is goddamned hilarious.
he was hanging out on set with my friend and a white girl in a kimono walked by and he yelled out oh shit. They got the Asian jump off in here. Russell Crowe is apparently super down to earth, but he can get a bit isolated if you catch him while he's focusing. Christian Bale acts kind of like Kinu, but he also can be so focused on his work that he kind of forgets to interact with people. Ryan Gosling is apparently hilarious and lovely. Brian Cranston is also what you'd expect. He's a super nice guy who acts kind of like a father figure to most people. So to answer your question, Jake Gyllenhaal and Emma Watson are the worst I've heard about so far. Third hand here so who knows. But a person I know has worked with Kevin Smith. During the filming of Live Free or Die Hard they were shooting Kevin's scenes. I guess the call time was 7 a.m. Everyone is ready. Lights on. Sound check. Yada yada. No Bruce Willis. Turns out he was at a nearby bar having mimosas. The aide that went to get him was told I'm John McElcane. What are they gonna do? Fire me? Or something to that effect. To Kevin's estimation 90k ish dollars were wasted in pay, rental fees and what not waiting on Bruce to be ready to go. Not a movie set but I work at a major music festival by driving the artist from stage to their campsites, tour buses. Every. Single. EDM group I have ever drove act like 35 year old man children crossed with cringy neck beards. They are all douchebags. Bass Nectar and Skrillex are the worst. I used to work in the film and TV industry. Tyra Banks legitimately will fire some people if they look her in the eye when passing in the hallway, mostly in turns. Uck. On the plus side, Tom Hanks and David Tennant are genuinely amazing. And Eric Dane. Good guy. Once an actress yelled at one of our new writers, and Eric heard about it. He later came by to apologize publicly in front of the whole cast and crew, even though it wasn't his doing. Love that guy. And someone on the crew later tried to poison that actress, so. I used to work in a certain job for the movie industry. My whole family still does. There are a few groups of people on set who get to see the talent as they really are away from the spotlight, who get so good at not interacting with them that the stars forget someone is there, and this one is one of them. Now, in the biz, you get treated a lot of different ways, and most times you just shrug it off and act like a professional because you are being paid stupid good money to drive and everyone has bad days. Plus, this demographic of people use drugs and alcohol more frequently than most. So you never really know what's going on with them, and you never want to burn a bridge for work because the industry can go up or down. Work is not always steady. With that said, the following experiences are about people who are consistently, over weeks, months, or years, insufferable d-heads to multiple people. There is a documented set of data points to show a trend of indiscriminate a hollery over time. 1. Chris Effing O'Donnell. Hands down the worst. This a hole is literally the worst I have seen in the industry. This extremely minor television actor and former model, C his fat neck, thinks he is not only talented but divine and will wonder aloud why lessers are doing something near him. Chris once complained to production that a slightly overweight security guard was assigned to an area near catering. If Chris O'Donnell. Chris, if you're reading this, you are a effing pole smoker and your neck is fat. Everyone laughs at you when you are not around, especially production. To Helen Hunt. More like Helen Cunt. 3. If Helen and Chris got together and got to knock in hooves, the ground would open up and hell would regurgitate Catherine Heigl. 4. I watched Marissa Tomei yell at a PA who had just slipped and broken his leg in front of her to get out of her way. 5. Jamie Foxx was such a racist and mean mother if for on Ray that our driver took the meanest, waxiest, smelliest dump in history in his trailer. 
extremely unprofessional but it immediately raised crew member morale as everyone knew this effing baby came back to the trailer one day to find his toilet destroyed with remnants in and outside of it. 6. Steven Seagal Imagine forming your entire identity and life's work around being an action hero martial artist only to end up being a hairy lard. It must be like starting out looking like Pierce Brosnan and Pokemon evolving into Jesse Ventura. There are also some really cool people out there. My favorites. 1 LL Cool J. 2 Machine Gun Kelly, even if he's just a big pothead. 3 Lindsay Lohan. I haven't seen her in a while, I worked with her back when people didn't really know she had a drinking problem. She pulled the old grey goose in a water bottle move. I thought she was a great person, just had problems. I hope she found help, for Howard Stern and the Stern Show in general. Howard talks about how high maintenance he is but his staff is very good about preparing you and he never gave me ish as long as my ducks were in a row. I don't particularly care for his wife Beth, seems like she's only nice to you if you're someone. 5. Mark Harmon is the effing man. Here are some people who I found to be not good or bad, just strange. 1. Gerard Butler is about 18 years old in his head. 2. Christopher Walken is literally just as insane as you might think. 3. Joe Aquin Phoenix is like that guy who wants to be your friend but is impaired by several layers of mental illness. 4. Samuel L. Jackson is very into porn. No, you don't get it, very big fan of porn. 5. Tom Cruise is a effing wacko. No surprise here. If Tom decided to talk to you, he would get inappropriately interested in my new fear about you. I mentioned I like three creamers in my coffee and he thought it was just about the most interesting effing thing he had ever heard in his life. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you were at all entertained, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing for future content. Stay safe everyone, until next time.